Assalamu alaikum. We have just launched our Fight with Light fundraising campaign for Seekers Hub Global, where our goal is to raise $60,000 in monthly donations by the end of the year. And all of this money will go towards fighting ignorance and fighting hatred and fighting extremism by spreading the light of knowledge and the light of guidance and the light of the way of our Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hope that you'll join us in this fight. And you can do so by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. You're listening to The Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani, who will be covering Imam Yusuf al-Nabahani's beautiful collection of 40 sets of 40 hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as well as Imam Zarnuji's guidance for seekers of knowledge regarding the ways of seeking knowledge. Ta'lim al-Mut'allim, Turuq al-Ta'lim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Um, الحمد لله. We are continuing our look at the 40 hadiths on the virtues of Iman and Islam. And we have been looking at the key qualities of the people of faith and the great blessing that is faith and we stopped at hadith number twenty six uh, twenty seven which is a hadith of Abu Huraira Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Abu Huraira may, may Allah be well pleased with him relates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال والذي نفس محمد بيده لا يسمع بي أحد من هذه الأمة يهودي ولا نصراني ثم يموت ولم يؤمن بالذي أرسلت به إلا كان من أصحاب النار Rahu Muslim. So Abu Huraira who relates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that by the one in whose grasp is the soul of Muhammad, by the one in whose grasp is the soul of Muhammad, no, no one hears of me, of this community, whether Jewish or Christian, and then dies not having believed in what I have come with, except that they are of the people of hell. right? By the one in whose grasp is the soul of Muhammad, no one hears of me, said the Prophet ﷺ of this ummah, of this community, and this is the ummah of ijaba, the ummah of response, those who have, the ummah of calling. Right? There's, the term ummah is used to refer to two meanings. One refers to the ummah of those who accepted the call of the Prophet wasallam, and that is called ummatul ijaba. And in that sense, Ummah refers to the Muslims. The second meaning of Ummah is the c- community of humanity. Right? Because all humans were addressed by the call of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is an evidence of that. No one hears of me of this Ummah. Right? Meaning the Ummah of those he was sent to, all humanity. Whether Jewish or Christian. And the reason the Jews and the Christians are highlighted, because though they are people of the book, they believe in God, they believe in a prophet from God, they believe in in, in revelation. However, it is clear from many texts of the Qur'an and from hadith such as this, that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with an abrogating message. Right? That with the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whomever the message of Islam reaches is obligated to believe in it. Right? Islam obligated, uh, uh, Islam abrogated the previous religions. Right? You can't say, well, I respect the Muslims, but I choose to believe this. Because this is capital T truth. And also because the previous revelations were corrupted. Right? Were corrupted. So no one hears of me, meaning the message doesn't, you know, message reaches them soundly and they refuse to believe it. Whether, even if they're Jewish or Christian, and then they don't believe in what I have come with, except that they are of the people of hell, meaning if they die upon that. So we cannot judge about an individual person because we don't know what state they ultimately die in. Right? We cannot tell that specifically, right? We cannot tell that specifically why? Because we don't know because we don't know how they'll die. Like if they're alive, we don't know when they'll die and we don't know how they'll die. Right? Number one. Right? And even if they're in their final breath, for example, we don't know what may happen in that final breath, right? So we don't affirm the absurd, but this is why if we care about people, then we would have care to convey guidance to them. Right? And, we, and because that guidance is mercy, right? it preserves good in this life, and it is a means to eternal goods. Good. Right? Which is why the path of Islam has been, ref- has been described in the Quran is Subul as salam the pathways of peace. Of serenity, right? of salama, right? it puts hearts to rest. Right? So this tells us one about a theological point, right? That of the that it is, you know, that n- no one hears of me, of any people, whether Jewish or Christian, and that does not believe in what I have come with except that they are of the people of hellfire, right? Meaning if they die upon that. The condition, of course, of the message reaching them soundly, etc., is very clear. Um, right? That the condition, that they, hear, that, they, that they hear of me, meaning that the message reaches them, and they don't believe in what I have come with, meaning that they have, that it's reached them in a way that would make them consider it, and accept or reject it. But this also establishes for us that a critical responsibility of the ummah is to convey this guidance to others. Right? That none of you believes until they wish for others of the good that they wish for themselves. This is not just limited to feeding the homeless and building wells, but it is also of giving the life-giving water, that is faith, the nourishment, that is guidance, to those who don't have it. Okay? And that is, that's the fundamental prophetic responsibility and concern. Say, this is my path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet to say, Ad'u ila Allah. I call to Allah. Ala basira, with insight. Okay? The next hadith, which is related to this, عن علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن عبد حتى يؤمن بأربع يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله بعثني بالحق ويؤمن بالموت ويؤمن بالبعث بعد الموت ويؤمن بالقدر راه الترمذي so the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith related by Ali ibn Abi Talib, the fourth of the Khulafa, and the nephew of the Prophet ﷺ, the cousin of the Prophet. ﷺ. Um, 
the son of his uncle. None of you, be- no servant believes until they believe in four matters. That they bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah. He sent me with truth, with the truth, bil haq. al haqqu, when it comes to the truth is that which corresponds to what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has come with. And they believe in death, that it's a reality. And one believes in resurrection after death. That every soul will taste death and all souls will be resurrected. And and they believe in divine decree. Uh, that everything that happens is because Allah decreed it. And as things happen, it's destined. It's destiny unfolding. So one sees it, it is all from Allah. But yet we are responsible beings. We have the capacity to choose. And we are responsible for the choices. The final hadith we're going to look at today. عن العباس بن عبد المطلب رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ذاق طعم الإيمان من رضي بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد رسولا راه مسلم والترمذي So العباس the uncle of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ابن عبد المطلب may Allah be well pleased with him said I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say The taste of faith, ta'am al-iman, the taste of faith has been experienced by the one who is content with Allah as Lord, with Islam as religion, and with Muhammad as messenger. And this is related by Muslim and al-Tirmidhi. And it's put in the past in dhaqa, right? That the taste of religion has been experienced by the one, right? So, iman, right, has been described as being, is understood to be like a seed that is planted in the heart. Right? In, a, in Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, مَثَلُ كَلِمَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ The example of the good word is like a good tree. أصلها ثابت Its root is firm. And what's the root? It is faith in which there is confirmation and certitude. Right? Its root, its roots are firm. Right? So it's a seed right? from which roots come. And this is the yaqeen of the believer. The strength of faith of the believer. Right? But a tree... أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتْ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ And its branches are in the sky. Right? Its branches are in the sky. It is upright. Right? It is upright. It, it yearns for the celestial. Right? Its branches are in the sky. And the, the, the tree, as it were, right? the tree is rooted, but it is yearning for the absolute. Right? It is yearning for the absolute. Right? The tree is a metaphor for the neediness of the, the yearning of the human soul. Right? For the absolute, for the divine, for the eternal. But the sign of the good tree right? of faith, that is, whose seed has been planted in good soil, and that has taken root is, Allah Taala says, "Tu'ti ul ukulaha." Right? It gives its fruit in every season by leave of its Lord. Right? The good tree is fruitful. Right? Its benefit is experienced. This is why faith, true faith, is fruitful. Right? What is the fruits of faith? Are the states and conduct of the true believer. 
right? So true faith is experienced, right? True faith is experienced, and this is why the Prophet ﷺ used this beautiful expression: "La qatam al iman." True, you know. The he has tasted, right? The the taste he has experienced, the taste of faith. Whoever, and what's the state of them? Man radiya billahi rabba. Whoever is content with Allah as Lord. So contentment, rida, is a critical that what you can summarize. What does faith entail? Faith entails contentment, rida. Right? Allahu anhum wa radu anha. Allah is well pleased with them and they with Him. And this quality of rida, being content with Allah Himself. You're content with who Allah is. You're content with His attributes. You are content with His actions. You are content with His wisdom. You are content with His mercy. You are content with His justice. You are content with Him in what is pleasing and you're content with Him in what would appear to be displeasing. But, and one is content with Allah as Lord. Right? He is your Lord, and you are content to be His slave, His servant. Wabi Muhammadin Nabiya, and content with Muhammad, Wabi Muhammadin Rasula. Right? Sorry, Wabi Islam and with Islam as one's way in life. Content. Deen is. Religion, but it refers to your life transaction, how you live out your life, what is, what are you committed to in life? That is your deen, yeah, your way in life, right? And with Islam as one's way in life, who are you? I'm content. What does Allah's guidance say about something? That is what I am content with. If it says. Turn right, you turn right. If it says turn left, you turn left. Do I make that investment? It's not, well, I feel like it, and I'll seek to justify it. But the believer is the one, the one who has experienced the sweetness of Iman. If, because what is Islam? It is what Allah has commanded His servants. Why? Because this is what is pleasing to Him, and this is what is good for them in this life and in the next. So if this is pleasing to my Lord, I will act upon it. With content, with contentedness, and with the certitude that this is of benefit in this life and the next. How? Maybe I understand it. Maybe I don't. Wabi Muhammadin Rasula and content with Muhammad as messenger. Who is he? What is our attitude to Muhammad? He is a Rasul. Right? He is the emissary of God. Allah has blessed creation with prophets and he has blessed us with the final and greatest of prophets whose message is preserved and he is god's representative right he has come to us with a direct message on god that oh oh my servants this is what is pleasing to me and he's not just conveyed that but he has embodied that this is what is pleasing to me the Prophet ﷺ has come with the embodiment of all that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the three are related because if you're content with Allah as your Lord, then you would be content with Islam. Islam is how to submit to the one you believe in as your Lord. Okay? But there's a basic submission, but if but there is a striving for excellence in submission. What is excellence in submission? is by being content with Muhammad as your messenger, as the emissary of God. The embodiment of all that is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as our teachers mentioned, that the greatest celebration of the Prophet wasallam is love that results in striving to walk on his footsteps. As Mawlana Rumi said, I am the dust. I am I'm but dust on the path of Muhammad. Right? 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the, the, the taste of faith has been experienced by the one content with Allah as Lord and with Islam as religion, as way of, as way of life, and with Muhammad as messenger. And this is related by Imam Muslim and Tirmidhi. And next hadith, next um, next Monday, inshallah, we'll be looking at, at a beautiful hadith where the, where a man came and asked the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me in Islam something I couldn't ask anyone else. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, say, I believe in Allah, and then be upright. Okay? And we'll see what that entails. It's a important and foundational hadith. So that's what we wanted to look at today. Um, we're um, in terms of hadith from this collection of 40 hadiths on the virtues of faith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make us experience the sweetness of faith and that He make us like the good tree um, whose roots are firm and whose branches are in the sky and which gives its fruit in every season by leave of its Lord. The fruits that are within the spiritual fruits of the qualities of faith, of love and reverence and hope and fear and awe and the traits of character of mercy and concern and good opinion and seeking good for others and the outward fruits of conduct that is pleasing to Allah and of benefit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, conduct that is sincere and upright um, and principled, that upholds truth and justice with mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realize us in those meanings. Um, wa sallallahu ala Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for listening to the Rauha, daily guidance for seekers with Sheikh Faraz Rabbani. Help Seekers Hub give light to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.